Do you want to take me on a little tour of the atrium? Yeah, absolutely. So if you follow me around, you'll see that you uh, uh, can walk around like you usually would. You can uh -huh. look around and the, the space is exactly like it is in, uh, in real life. Uh -huh. Um, and while we are still putting the final sort of bits and bobs in, this is already a hub world to many other experiences that are around. Mm -hmm. um, so from this uh, environment, you can go to up to nine different spaces that are already there as well. Mm -hmm. So I see little doorways appearing on my left and, uh, and, and right back there, which would show yeah. places that we can go into. This is a really big space. I've not seen a space this large in, the, in a web-based virtual reality platform before. And what's really cool is we are fairly adept at sort of creating uh, very optimized spaces that look really good but don't sort of uh, um, aren't too happy to load on a, on a web uh, interface. This will load on your phone as well, and that's really cool about this. That is cool. And if you were moving around in your phone, uh, um, I mean, it would just be a slightly different user interface. You would maybe pinch outwards yeah. to move forwards and pinch yeah, outwards to move back. You can uh, uh, move around in two ways on your phone. Uh, you can pinch, uh, just like you would zoom in on a picture to, to walk around the space. Uh, or you could, uh, uh, you have two virtual joysticks that uh, let you walk around the room. Oh, cool. And I guess if you were in the virtual reality headset in this, and obviously we're both on our, our laptops here, um, so we're just using our mouse and our arrow keys to move around and look around. But on a, in a virtual reality headset, I think you've got a couple of options as well there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, if you're, uh, a lot of the questions I get when people say like, okay, so this is a really big space, how would I move around in, in virtual reality because I don't have that physical space? Mm. Uh, you can walk around in the physical space you do have. Um, so uh, that means that you can freely move around in the physical space that you uh, that you have while you're wearing a, VR, a virtual reality headset. Yep. Uh, you could also use a controller to move around or use the teleport functionality to, to sort of indicate the place you want to go to and instantly go there. Now that's really good because using a controller to move around or a joystick can be good but the disconnect between the real physical movement and the perceived movement can cause a little bit of seasickness in some people whereas i know that using the teleport doesn't cause that at all you just click to where you want to go should we try that yeah absolutely um i can uh, demonstrate it here on, uh, on my desktop as well okay. on the desktop when you uh, use the right mouse button you can actually click and you see a line that uh, appear and then you'll immediately be transported to that location it's I a very see. quick way I'm moving it around and I, there we go Excellent. So it's a very fast way to get around. I'm going to go to the top of these stairs and see if I can get yeah. there. Also. And uh, oh, here's a room. Shall we? Uh, yeah. Shall we move into the room? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Okay. Do, do, do. So I just click on here to visit it. Um, so what's really cool about these uh, these places is they are all physical places. Um, so we have received images of all the colleges that are involved with this uh, with this trial, um, and uh, we have all modeled them after physical spaces that were actually really there, uh, and we really captured the spirit of these uh, these places inside these physical uh, rooms as well. That's awesome, and. Uh I, I see that you've got seats here, so I know that in classroom environments like this, your your teacher or your learning facilitator can actually seat students to stop them from yeah. running around, mute students to stop them from talking over them, if necessary, and uh, and also apply uh, something called a God voice. Now, this is a good opportunity to talk about audio. So thus far, we've been using audio from another uh, from another platform in order to be able to hear each other from a distance. But I know that in this environment, you get spatial audio, and spatial audio allows uh, if I were to move away or you were to move away, our voices should get fainter. So I'll start. Hello, 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 hello. hello. And then <laughs> say hello again. Hello. There we go. So we can already hear that your faints are from that distance. And yeah. as we get closer, I guess I can like. Hear you Excellent. And also what I'm seeing here is that when you're speaking and when I'm speaking, there's a little graphic equalizer above our heads and that's what would be the default. That means that if there's multiple people in the room, I guess, um, you know who's talking and so you know who to talk back to. Yeah, and then even uh, um, uh, there's a slight movement on the lips as well, uh, which lets you see sort of uh, uh, what person is talking. Mm. Uh, and what is uh, very, very important about sort of the spatial audio is spatial audio actually is so important for sort of social settings because it allows us to really uh, um, work and operate in groups. Um, and it allows us to come together and have a sort of more private conversation with somebody that's next to you rather than sort of uh, speaking to an entire group. And of so, course, we have 
uh, tool set up that allow us to broadcast our voice to towards an entire room or or raise our voice will actually work in this uh, environment as well. Uh, but you can have a, a quick one-to-one -one with somebody. That's great. So so we could go into the corner, for instance, and uh, you know have, have set five people in the corner to have a conversation about something and they wouldn't be full. It would be like a normal room. They wouldn't be necessarily yeah. audible to the people in the other corner. So it means that you can actually separate people off into groups for brainstorming. As you say, take them aside for a one-to-one -one if it requires. Um, and, uh, and it means that you can basically behave as if you were in a normal classroom, something which is yeah. very difficult to do in Zoom or Teams or any of those environments. Particularly mm -hmm. as you can put people into a breakout room in Zoom or Teams, but as soon as you arrive as a learning facilitator, it tells everybody that you've arrived and everybody clams up or starts behaving yeah. differently. Whereas here, you can... Very cool. Now, if I were to be at the back of the room and I wanted to get a better view of the screen that you're sharing, is there a way that I can uh, make that full screen on my screen? Absolutely. Um, um, there's a very easy way to make things full screen. If you press right click on any screen that's actively shared, it will uh, show it full screen for you as well. Excellent. I see that. Okay. Well, that's great. That makes it much easier. And of course, given that you have full control over the space, you can just walk right up to it as well. 